geneticist David Reich sparked a major debate by claiming that everyone non-African is actually an evolved Neanderthal. Furthermore, contrary to the belief that only 2% or 3% of our DNA comes from Neanderthals, he argues that Europeans are actually up to 20% Neanderthal. According to Reich, Neanderthal DNA was removed from our genomes through natural selection over the last 50,000 years. So the percentage of Neanderthal in our non-African ancestors was actually much higher than the 2% Neanderthal DNA found in our genomes today. If you are not African, we can say that 10% to 20% of your ancestors were Neanderthal. In fact, with a strong argument, you can even claim that non-Africans today are actually Neanderthals. Neanderthals, who disappeared from the archaeological record about 40,000 years ago, have long been considered our closest evolutionary relatives. However, since the discovery of the first Neanderthal remains in the 1850s, scientists have debated whether Neanderthals are a separate species or an extinct subset of our own species, Homo sapiens. In 1856, German anthropologist Hermann Schaffhausen examined the bones of a Neanderthal man and concluded that they might belong to a barbaric and savage race that was wiped out by a more powerful human form. In 1863, Irish geologist William King identified the fossil as a new species, Homo neanderthalensis. King also wrote that the being to whom the fossil belonged was characterized by darkness, and that the thoughts and desires that once dwelt within it never went beyond those of an animal. One hundred years later, in 1962, a group of anthropologists gathered in Austria to design and vote on the evolutionary history of human relatives based on the species discovered at that time. The textbook, titled Classification and Human Evolution, classified Neanderthals as a subspecies of Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, based on their overlapping morphologies. Twenty years later, in the 1980s, Neanderthals were again classified as their own species based on the out-of-Africa theory of human origins, and this is still the most common definition used today. The term Homo sapiens neanderthalensis was popular when Neanderthals were thought to be the ancestors of our own species, Homo sapiens sapiens. But most paleoanthropologists no longer support this view or use this term. Chris Stringer of the British Museum was a leading advocate of the separate species concept in the 1980s, arguing that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens could not be the same species because their fossils overlap, especially in the Middle East. This includes Homo sapiens from the school and Kafsa caves, and Neanderthals from the Amud and Shanidar caves. Regardless, genetic studies have shown that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred and share many genetic traits. This makes our ancient brothers and sisters Neanderthals fascinating because of the many mysteries and unanswered questions surrounding them. In this video, we will learn the truth about all the mysteries surrounding Neanderthals. In fact, much of what we thought we knew about Neanderthals is wrong. They have long been labeled as brutish creatures, but new research is changing that narrative. Indeed, our initial view that Neanderthals were our lumbering, stupid cousins is very ignorant. Biologists classify everyone on the planet today as Homo sapiens sapiens, regardless of their appearance or geographic location. However, some commentators now argue that extinct Neanderthals, with their thick eyebrows and large noses, should also be included in our species. What defines our species and who is eligible to join the group? According to the biological species concept, species are reproductively isolated entities that breed only among themselves. All living Homo sapiens have the ability to reproduce with each other, but cannot successfully interbreed with our closest living relatives, gorillas or chimpanzees. On this basis, Interbreeding species cannot be considered different species. Critics who disagree that Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens are different species now point to recent genetic research to support their claims. This shows that the two interbred when they met in the Middle East about 55,000 years ago. As a result, everyone alive today who has ancestors who lived outside of Africa at that time inherited a small but significant amount of Neanderthal DNA. The problem, therefore, is not with Neanderthals, modern humans, or any other interbreeding species, but with the biological species concept itself. This is just one of dozens of proposed species concepts and is less useful in the genomic age because of the numerous examples of interspecies admixture. 
In most cases, mammals and birds diverge from each other gradually. It can take millions of years for complete reproductive isolation to develop, and this clearly did not happen for Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. But what about the archaeological evidence that Neanderthals had cultural behaviors, such as burying their dead and painting on cave walls? As intriguing as this is, proponents of the separate species theory argue that it should be excluded from the biological classification of species because behaviors are potentially more fluid, evolve more rapidly, and spread more easily within and between species than traits based on anatomy or DNA. Neanderthals survived extremely harsh conditions for hundreds of thousands of years. They shared Europe with Homo sapiens for only about 10,000 years, and they no longer exist beyond these facts. The fate of the Neanderthals has generated much debate. They interbred with Homo sapiens sapiens on a fairly large scale. Followers of this theory believe that although Neanderthals no longer exist as organisms, their genes still exist today. Interbreeding diluted Neanderthal DNA because there were so many more Homo sapiens. Therefore, Neanderthals were a subspecies of Homo sapiens rather than a different species, so their scientific name should be Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Proponents of this theory offer the following evidence. Some Cro-Magnon populations exhibit Neanderthal-like features. Cro-Magnon remains from Vogelherd in Germany, and Mladek in the Czech Republic show a Neanderthal-like protrusion of the occipital protuberance at the back of the skull, more so than later Homo sapiens. Because many Neanderthal fossils and artifacts have been discovered in caves, the species has become associated with the concept of cavemen, but many modern humans also lived in caves. The most famous example is the original Cro-Magnon man discovered in France. Since the age of Cro-Magnon is later than that of the last known Neanderthal, these features may indicate significant interbreeding and DNA transfer between modern humans and Neanderthals. Furthermore, Cro-Magnon remains from Vogelherd in Germany, and Mladek in the Czech Republic show a Neanderthal-like protrusion of the occipital protuberance at the back of the skull, more so than later Homo sapiens. However, some Neanderthal populations contain modern human traits. For example, the Vindija Neanderthals appear more modern than other Neanderthals, suggesting that they may have interbred with incoming Homo sapiens. Modern Europeans share traits with Neanderthals. Furthermore, some modern Europeans have a mandibular foramen in the lower jaw similar to that of Neanderthals, and some isolated modern European populations have a distinct gap at the back of the mandible. Regardless, another study confirms the existence of three distinct subgroups of Neanderthals that show minor differences and suggests the existence of a fourth group in Western Asia. The study examined genetic variability and modeled various scenarios using the genetic makeup of mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down through the mother. According to the study, the size of the Neanderthal population fluctuated over time, and there was some migration between subgroups. Remains of this species have been discovered throughout Europe and the Middle East, but a fossil skull from China known as Maba may represent the easternmost Neanderthal presence. Interestingly, the term Homo neanderthalensis means human from the Neander Valley. In fact, the term Homo neanderthalensis refers to the Neander Valley in Germany, where the first significant specimen was discovered in 1856. The valley was named after a poet who changed his surname from Neumann to Neander. The modern German word for valley is Tal, but in the 1800s it was spelled Thal. Therefore, some people refer to this species as Neanderthal, to reflect the modern German spelling instead of the original spelling Neanderthal. However, since the species name was given before the spelling change, the original spelling is most commonly used. So if you want to sound like an academic, say Neanderthal. If you want to sound like a normal person, say Neanderthal. Whichever you prefer, humans replacing Neanderthals. Today, most theories agree that Neanderthals exhibited advanced behaviors and adaptive strategies, rather than being sluggish creatures largely unable to compete with superior Homo sapiens. However, incoming Homo sapiens must have been doing something different and slightly superior to give them an advantage under these conditions. Exactly what they were doing that was slightly superior is debatable. A number of new studies are intriguing because they focus specifically on the role of climate change and the subtle differences that behavior and biology played under these conditions. 
Perhaps two or more factors contributed to their demise. For example, evidence from Neanderthal ankles supports claims that Neanderthals could not run as far as modern humans. Their heel bones are longer than those of modern humans, resulting in a longer Achilles tendon. The shorter Achilles tendons seen in modern humans store more energy and are therefore more efficient for running. Neanderthals did not need to be good long-distance runners because they hunted in forest habitats using ambush tactics. But this could be a significant disadvantage when conditions changed. Evidence suggests that this occurred 50,000 years ago, when much of northern Europe changed from forest to tundra due to advancing ice sheets. Neanderthals were forced into isolated forest refuges in southern regions, while modern humans adapted to hunting in the growing tundra. This is different from our view of Neanderthals as a cold-weather species and Homo sapiens as a tropical species. Neanderthal culture lacked the depth of symbolic and progressive thought displayed by modern humans, which may have made competition difficult. While Neanderthal culture remained relatively static, modern Homo sapiens were gradually developing a complex culture. When Homo sapiens arrived in Europe 45,000 years ago, we had developed a sophisticated cultural system, even though the archaeological record shows little cultural difference between the two species 100,000 years ago. Furthermore, Neanderthals may have lacked the adaptability of modern humans, who had complex social networks spread over wide areas. Neanderthal populations, concentrated in small and specific areas, may have been more vulnerable to local extinctions. Neanderthal survival techniques were less developed than those of Homo sapiens. In fact, Neanderthals were probably very dogmatic in their thinking and closed to innovation. This may be because Neanderthals did not use their brains in the same way that modern humans do, because their brains are shaped differently. Human brains have enlarged parietal and cerebellar regions. These regions form in the first year of life and are associated with important functions, such as the ability to integrate sensory information and form abstract representations of the environment. There were also potentially violent interactions with modern humans. According to French archaeologist Ludovic Slimak, the mating of Neanderthals and modern humans may have been the result of failed alliances. He stated that when two populations are close to each other, but very different, they will exchange their women, and this is extremely important in terms of cultural anthropology because gene exchange is not a romantic relationship. When searching for ancient DNA from 40,000 to 45,000 years ago, all Homo sapiens recently had Neanderthal DNA which is why we still have Neanderthal DNA today. However, when DNA is extracted from the last Neanderthals, who lived 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, there is not a single Neanderthal who recently had Homo sapiens DNA. This is interesting because Neanderthals inherited about 10% of their genes from an earlier period of interbreeding about 120,000 years ago. As mentioned, when two populations are close to each other, but very different, they will exchange women. This means that women have more mobility. It means that my sister will join your group. And we know from DNA that the issue of patriarchy or women's mobility is also relevant to Neanderthals. This is a critical issue for understanding extinction and the exact interaction of the two populations. Why did this interbreeding fail? The genetic differences between the two populations were as significant as they should have been to have tried and failed. And we know from DNA that when these two populations met and had children, the boys were either infertile or did not survive. As a result, populations made numerous attempts to establish exchanges and alliances, but none were successful, and the Neanderthal population was absorbed into the Homo sapiens population. However, when a Neanderthal woman joins a Homo sapiens tribe, but no Homo sapiens woman joins a Neanderthal tribe, this only happens when the two populations are at war in which case, you no longer see the other group as guilty and therefore no longer human. In this case, you will kill the men, but keep the children and women. Therefore, the answers to the question surrounding Neanderthals are clear. Neanderthals are not our cousins, but our ancestors, and therefore the same species as us. And with that provocative statement, we will leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history until next time. Stay curious and inquisitive. Goodbye.